Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, into your phones and uh, wherever way you are watching this video from. It's tough times, isn't it? And it's hard for me to try and keep up the momentum because I don't want to come over as, you know, being um, stressed and everything. So I'm going to try and have it be a little up-tempo, even though we all know that... Um, it's it's not easy it's not easy at all so um it is uncomfortable i'm an essential worker so i still have to go into work despite what is going on and when you know you have to go into work when they're talking about lockdown lockdown isolating and blah 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 it's a, it's kind of unnerving but i do have my own i well i have been isolated to an office which makes me feel more comfortable so that is more, less about me and more about the topic which I want to discuss. Um, just remember that even when you're shopping and um, you're touching trolleys, you know, to make sure you wipe your hands um, afterwards. I mean, they're talking about dirty money and then, you know, they and then they're talking about, you know, you're still going to get your mail. Isn't the mail the same thing? You know, people are sending stuff through the post. It's the same it's the same thing. So there's still inconsistencies. Anyway, I have a very, very serious topic to discuss. And it's, um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to um, bring it forward. But I'm going to try my best to bring it forward in a way that is not too disturbing. But which also... Um, alerts us to potential outcomes and how we should prepare for those potential outcomes. So, uh, like I said, um, I've been getting paranoid too, but I have to ask myself, how does that serve my subscribers? There's no point um, playing the victim and being negative. And sometimes I don't realise that that's what I'm doing. And forgive me if I come over as negative or as a victim. You know, sometimes our past experiences make us do that and we don't even realise that's what we're doing. So I'm going to try and come over as a victor in this video, as difficult as it may be. No, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, I'm going to come over as a victor. Anyway, there are things that are happening around the world that are reminiscent of our past. And when I say our past, I'm talking about black people. Um, and which makes us believe that what is happening now is a repetition. Um, innuendos add fuel to the fire. Language is not clear. And although the virus does not discriminate, it is easy for black people to see this as a guise that they're out to get them. Because when you, and it is to do with the history, it is to do with racial profiling, it is to do with discrimination in certain areas and with certain people. So black people will feel particularly vulnerable at this time. And the government fuels that paranoia. And I'm not saying that paranoia is, isn't justified, but it's our attitude that will make the difference. We cannot allow ourselves to be victims. Um, and a victim is somebody who believes that every everybody's doing something to them. You know, they don't take responsibility of what is going on. They blame everyone. Everyone's to blame. And um, they don't take any responsibility for themselves. So that's what a victim mentality is. So someone sent me King Alfred's plan. I don't know how many of you know about that. When I looked at it, I was quite disturbed and it was sent to me this morning in response to my video about the 300 um, detainees that had been released. There was something um, about what I'd said in that video, although I wasn't aware of it at the time, that triggered one of my subscribers to send the plan. So um, King Alfred's plan is a supposed or a fictitious CIA-led scheme supporting an international effort to eliminate people of African descent. And it was invented by John A. Williams in his novel, The Man Who Cried, I Am. 
you can get it off of Amazon. I was looking to see how much it was. It's 35 quid and a, and a few pence. Anyway, John Williams is a black man. And I cannot understand why he would write a novel like that. Why? You know, it is beyond me. Because all it takes is one person's imagination for another person to manifest that. That's all it takes. And that book in the hands of somebody like Trump is not in safe hands. So, I cut, well, let me see. The author is John A. Williams, who is a black man who fictionalised a government plan to deal with the threat of a black uprising in the USA by cordoning off black people into concentration camps in the event of a major incident. John A. Williams then copied and Xeroxed, well, they used to call it Xerox back in the day, but we just call it photocopying now. He photocopied portions of his book specifically the Alfred plan and left it on subway car seats around Manhattan to promote his book. So that's what he was doing. He was thinking, oh, yeah, you know, I want people to buy my book. So I'm going to put this on all the car seats. And of course, people who found it, especially black people, found it really disturbing. They started to get paranoid and it caused some disarray. But when I read the extract, it disturbed me, too. I did a little research on it and there's not much about it. What What is, you know, videos have been discontinued or deleted. Um, I looked on Wikipedia and it gave me the little bit that I just um, recited a while ago. And the information seems to be disabled and a content is only available by applying under CCBY-SA 3.0. I don't know what that is. But if you want to see the PDF or anything more to elaborate, unless you're going to buy the book for 35 quid, um, you're not going to know much about it. So given the current situation, especially the different way America and the UK are handling the COVID-19 situation, they're handling it in such a different way from like all the other countries. And that's what makes it unsettling. Black people are starting to get paranoid. And circulating Alfred's plan is not helping. So if anybody is out there circulating Alfred's plan, just stop it. They reckon it's, it's, it was fictional. And what you're doing by reading it and passing it out, you're perpetuating it as a truth. You can make fiction become fact. By, you know, when they say, if you keep repeating something, it becomes real. That's what you're doing inadvertently by circulating Alfred's plan and, you know, putting ideas in your head and, you know, and manifesting it for yourself. I'm not saying that that's not what Boris and Donald Trump have got in their heads we can't know and it is important to some degree to be aware of what is in it but i don't even know what the right thing is to say or do but it's no point what i should say is there's no point circulating it unless you you kind of prefix it with something um something that is constructive something that will not give black people the mental the um the victim mentality but will empower them in some way in other words wh what is the worst case scenario how can we make this a best case scenario how can we turn things around so that we can we don't feel like victims that we don't feel under pressure that we don't feel disempowered what is it that we can do so and when once you start thinking that way, it's much more healthier because at the moment it's just like them against us a lot of the time. 
And paranoia is disabling and it gives way to the victim mentality. John A. Williams, imagine the scenario and the government could be manifesting it. Hence the reason why they're emptying detention centres that were previously occupied by so-called illegal immigrants. How come they're able to just empty them out like that? They're doing it in America. They're doing it in the UK. This is what makes everything so sinister. You know, and it's, it, it is disconcerting. Because if these people were in detention for goodness knows how long, I'd love to know what colour they are, what race but if these people were in detention um, under the guise of being illegal immigrants, how can they just let them loose? Obviously, they were withholding them, knowing they weren't illegal immigrants, and now they need the space for what they need, need it for. They've set them all free. Not unless, like I said, they may be rounding them up back under a different legislation. And Because I would imagine under if you're detained under, under the immigration law, you're you're that's you're going to be governed on a to under a totally different legislation than if you are detained under the emergency law. That's that emergency law that allows them to detain you indefinitely. So maybe they just want to let them out so that they can bring them back in under the new law. I don't know. I'm you know me. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, because otherwise people would say, why don't they, if they want the detention centres for as, concentr as concentration camps, why didn't they keep those who they released in them? But like I said, if the legislation doesn't cover that, they would have to detain them under the correct legislation in order to bring it about. So anyone they would need to put in these secure areas would need to be detained under the emergency measures. That's what I just said, actually. Um, there was also a US Navy study that cost 1.5 million called The Value of Life. And we heard that we heard Trump talking about the other day about prioritizing who should be able to access health care. Remember the elderly at the bottom of the, at the bottom of the list. They are at the bottom. They want to kill off the elderly or allow them to die in their own way, whichever way, whether it's complications, whatever it is. So, um, so when they're thinking about the value of life, they're thinking, what value do the elderly bring to the table? Forget all their past contributions. That doesn't count for nothing now, as far as they're concerned. Is what value are they bringing now in 2020? Um, and so, um, so that is both the States and the UK. Well, Trump has actually invested in the NHS, so he has a say in the, in the NHS. So he was saying that there's going to be three tiers with regard to um, prioritising who accesses healthcare. So it's a part of the same thing, value of life. It's almost like it's come out of that study. The rationale behind this US Navy study was, as we run out of space, good air and water, whose lives are more valuable? Those who are deemed less valuable in the government's eyes would need to be exterminated. And women using the welfare state are to be sterilised. That was a part of the whole study. So I don't know how true that study is. Um, when I was um, getting the review for the book, that was one of the links that was underneath the... Um, Underneath, you know, when they they ask follow the links for similar for similar information. Anyway, uh, but uh, apparently, regional detention centres are already being built in every state in the USA, which will be effectively used as concentration camps. However, Stuart Smith, a spokesman for Law Enforcement Assistance Administration in brackets L E A A, has denied this is happening. So. We don't know because we don't know where the source was to say that they are going to build concentration camps because 
in his book, what he's saying is that the um, the US government creates concentrations camps around the states and they get all the black people in there and they kill them off. That is basically what this book is about. That's why I can't understand why a black man would write something like that. I don't understand where his head is at and think it's something great. We are now... He, he, I mean, what they what he's causing is perpetuating his paranoia. That's really what this is about. Because by people sending that around and people go, oh, and all of that, it is it's perpetuating paranoia. And if I him leaving it on the on the on the um, subway seats when he did, I think it was in 1968, to promote a book. Why would you? Why would you do that? Why would you go to that extreme and give these people the idea? I just don't get it. Why can't we do something about black people triumphing? Why do black people always have to write about black people being the victim? Black people being maltreated and abused and all that crap. I don't understand why you would write a book like that. And it was a bestseller. I'm not surprised. People must have loved that book. And now he's deceased, he leaves his legacy for Trump to take it over. Anyway, this is just hypothesising as usual. But, you know, when you see that coming around like it did, you know it's kind of perpetuating what happened in 1968, where a lot of black people were absolutely terrified and didn't know what to do. So this is, this is, um, and then the thing is, is that nothing's being said. There's just, you know, like little rumours here and there and people are left to speculate. And there's nothing worse than speculating, really. I mean, I tend to do it, I know, I hypothesise and I kind of come out with my little ideas. But it's not really healthy. It's not healthy. And we have to think about a different way to get information across. But so it's not demoralising. But it's empowering. So that you look at it and think, okay. This is what this is what this guy wrote about. There's nothing to say that that is going to manifest itself in today. There's nothing to say that. And okay, worst case scenario, if it is what is planned, how am I going to deal with that? What would what? How would I how would I um, um, try to avoid it happening? And how can I do something? So I don't feel like a victim. I feel empowered by this process. Because the thing is with COVID ID, like I said, with the infection itself, that's all over the place. And, or it's meant to be all over the place. I'm I'm just lost. I've just lost it. There's just so much going around. It's just overwhelming. But with COVID ID, there's enough to contend with that because, you know, bit by bit, they're isolating, they're separating. I mean, in Spain, they're talking about then only one person allowed in a car. Um, I saw some and some other um, videos about, you know, there's something in Ireland, you know, the respiratory nurses. And it's just on and on and on. And the only time you get a little reprieve is when somebody kind of makes a joke about it and tries to make it might make it look light-hearted. Like they've got one going around with a dog and somebody coughs and the dog's eyes are going all over the place. It is so hilarious. Things like that I can handle because, you know, it makes a lighter side of it. But it can be quite demoralising to just get the information all the time. And when I'm at work, it's just constant, constant, constant. You know, not people talking necessarily to me, but talking to each other around me. So I was quite happy to be um, isolated today. So um, now this excerpt is recirculating to fuel the paranoia. And if the fiction is becoming reality, what do we do? 
Uh, we can avoid the victim of mentality. A victim cannot think rationally. A victim has no control over what is happening. A victim believes everything is happening to him or her. A victim makes excuses. So, how does a victor... What is the victor mentality? Well, a victor will say, how can I change what's happened to me? How can I take control of my life? My, this state of paranoia. No, they'll see paranoia as a state of mind that needs to be changed. Change your mindset, change the outcome. Anything that can be imagined can come into existence. So how can you imagine your future to be what you would like it to be and look like how you would like it to look? And what can you do to bring that about? Wikipedia says the King Alfred plan is supposed to be CIA led scheme supporting an international effort, effort to eliminate people of African descent invented by the author John A. Williams in his novel The Man Who Cried I Am. Specifically, it defined how to deal with the threat of black uprising in the United States by cordoning off black people into concentration camps in the event of a major racial incident. So King Alfred's plan, could fiction become reality? That's up to you. And that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.